Show of hands. Anyone familiar with our first reading from Numbers? Okay. Certainly the minority. And Ann, you did a great job with those names. How about it? This reading from Numbers, believe it or not, is not included in our lectionary. We never hear it on a Sunday. But how about those five daughters of Zalapahad, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Malka, and Tirza? They are mentioned five times by name in the Hebrew scriptures. Three times in Numbers, once in Joshua, and also in 1 Chronicles. So we're talking about an event that happened around 1407 before the common error, a long time ago, long before any of us were around. But it's curious, I think, that the names of so many women and girls have been erased from the Hebrew scriptures. And yet these five daughters, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Tirza, recur five times. What's so special about them? Just as Ann Wood proclaimed, they stood together in solidarity and presented their case to those who had the power to change things. And ultimately, they changed Israelite law, allowing women to inherit property. Yet, then and now, things are rarely as simple as they appear. Because despite agreeing, that the women could inherit the property. Nine chapters later in Numbers, when a group of men object to God's judgment through Moses that allowed women to inherit land, Moses adds the condition that women must marry within their tribe to receive their inheritance. After Moses dies and is succeeded by Joshua, our five sisters again assert their rights and Joshua gives them the land immediately. So let's hear it for Joshua, <laughs> right? But imagine, I mean, they didn't even have smartphones or the internet, but they got it done. Biblical scholar, Will Gaffney, in her book, Womanist Midrash, suggests that the saga of Mala and Noah and Hagla and Milka and Tirza is an empowering text demonstrating women's agency in confronting sexism and other forms of injustice in one's own cultural and religious community. She goes on to say their story is an explicit affirmation of women's agency and resistance to patriarchy by God. So then fast forward to our second reading or to our gospel, a contemporary interpretation of a parable we all know as the prodigal son. Except in our case, the widow has two daughters and inherited property when her husband died. The younger daughter requests her dowry and chooses to marry outside the tribe. Again, things are rarely as simple as they appear. Years later, this daughter realizes she wants to restore her relationship with her mother and finds her way home with her two young daughters. To her way of thinking, she'd be treated better living as a servant on her mother's property than as an abused wife, discounted by her husband. You know, we make the best decisions we can. And as our perspectives broaden and change, we make different choices. We take different routes. In fact, uh, before our liturgy today, I was talking to George uh, about a dream I had <laughs> Friday night. It was kind of a nightmare, but um, here's what, like I envisioned, granted coming back, I'm now back in this time zone, I think, but I somehow, didn't come here Sunday morning. I went to my old parish 
to preside. And um, okay. so like, how weird is that, right? We take different routes and we make different choices at different times in our lives and it's okay. But what happens in our gospel? The mother is elated to see her daughters and granddaughters and throws the party to celebrate. The older daughter is angry and resents all the fuss. And as we reflect on our lives, it's not, the, it's not too hard. At least it's not too hard for me to put myself into the behavior of the mother, the behavior of the older daughter or the younger daughter at different times. Rarely do our lives turn out the way we think they're supposed to. Most of us don't build trauma into what we anticipate. And yet over time, we inevitably encounter it. It's important that we share our stories, especially those that demonstrate that we are at home with one another. As you know, I was one of seven women with Alicia and Pat Brown, who you now know, um, in Rome during the Cardinal Consistory at the end of August. We were there to call attention to the fact that women continue to be excluded. Such a threat that we posed, the seven of us, with our red paper parasols, that the police moved us out of sight, detaining us for four hours. The police, the police told us that the messages painted on our parasols, like it's raining men, <laughs> and sexism is a cardinal sin, were negative. As the painter or the artiste, I took offense, but um, as we walked across St. Peter's Square on the way to the police station, I noticed a six inch feather on the ground at my feet and I knelt to pick it up. Hildegard's quote, thus am I a feather on the breath of God came to me and I smiled. Even the police officer's insistence that I leave the feather. Because <laughs> that too would have been threatening somehow. Um, did not dampen the significance of that moment. How validating and freeing to find a feather as we approached the obelisk amidst the opulence and grandeur of Bernini's colonnade guarded by 140 supersized statues of saints. So at 8 a.m. that morning, attired in red, we had walked with our parasols undisturbed along the Via della Conciliazione, my Italian needs some help, to St. Peter's and then turned left and processed under the columns toward the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith until 8.25, right, 25 minutes later, when the police secured us behind the barriers under the columns, we stood with our red parasols greeting the 197 cardinals as they arrived at the DDF for their meeting to discuss the new constitution that reforms the Roman Curia and opens the door to a greater presence of laity and women. So we were dubbed the Magnificent Seven by someone who posted on WOW's Facebook page. I kind of like that, the Magnificent Seven. So we stood just as I imagined the five sisters, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Tirza stood together in solidarity, presenting their case before those who held the power to change things. May we learn their names. May we say their names. They're not that hard. They're much easier than dad's name, right? Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Terza. 
may they inspire all of us to create change and seek justice. The bottom line, mercy, compassion, and justice. That's the message. God bless you all. Yeah.